basically wanted to get your views on where you see things happening in the market, um, North America, Europe, elsewhere, and um, give us your thoughts on where the pipeline is going to lead us. Okay. Well, it's a tough question. You know that I just uh, take care of uh, airports on a worldwide basis and on the airport. Mm -hmm. don't, don't ask me anything else. Yes. But it's a tough job because, first of all, there are not so many opportunities around. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, when you have some of them, well, you rather want to keep it for yourself or uh, just to choose the client that might be more interested uh, mm -hmm. in that. So to answer more specifically your question, uh, well, in Europe, a lot of processes are uh, finishing, like uh, the Sofia deal. Well, Athens is a very peculiar one uh, exactly. because it's a sale of a 30% stake. You are a clear front runner, but a lot of people say, so what? Mm -hmm. But still, you buy a minority against somebody who would get the majority. So there is a difference in price. Uh, then you've got uh, some... Uh, in Italy, it's moving. Yeah. It's, one of, it's maybe one of the most active uh, countries uh, in Europe, I mean, because uh, indeed uh, there has been, uh, you know, uh, Puglia, uh, you've got uh, Sicily, the two various uh, catchment areas of Palermo and Catania. You have also some ideas that Olbia may change also. Okay. So the, they are moving a little bit, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, there are not so many airports with, a, at least from a bank perspective, a decent size. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, we are not going to advise to then say to our client, oh, too small, um, we don't want it. So. And Sophia, okay, I guess the, they opened the financial offers last week, and ADP TAV seems to have the best financial offer, but, I, yeah, but uh, I understand there's still a technical review. Which is not just um, an easy one. Of course, the price differential might justify that they mm -hmm. go, uh, that they have a better chance for sure. We looked at it with uh, somebody else, but we stopped the process and we had, because the concession, at least the very first yeah. draft of the concession was totally not acceptable. And as you know that at the end of the day, the client will say, well, can you put some money? Uh, so we'll uh, we They did have four or process. five offers at the end. So. Yeah, that's why. But we, we cut it uh, at the process at that point in time because our client dropped it also. So uh, mm -hmm. there was no point for us to try to search somebody else uh, yeah. for that. So. What about the Montenegro process? I haven't looked at it because, you know, sometimes uh, country risk makes that... Uh, yeah, because it's gone very quiet. It was very active yeah, and, yeah. and seems to be quite quiet. And that's always the, the tricky part. You never know which which transactions are actually going to get across the line. So. No, that's why um, even for us, I mean, we look, we try to have uh, various uh, opportunities, studies, m see what are feasible try to call various people to know what the process what's, looks like what's going on but at a certain point in time is some uh, for one reason or others are out of our um, let's say natural scope uh, we just don't follow it and uh, we, we keep it aside otherwise we we waste a little bit. We get diluted in looking too many. Exactly. And we are only three, yeah. So. So, what is sort of the ideal target for credit agriculture? Right now. Yeah. Well, U.S. Everybody is praying uh, God or Trump. Sure. Make it as you want, uh, because you know that when it kicks start, there will be plenty of opportunities. Exactly. We have, um, hopefully, will. Uh, well, GFK for me, it's a very interesting and smart mm -hmm. transaction. And when you look into the uh, the agreement they had, there is a good sharing of interest between the various stakeholders, which, from a lender's perspective, is uh, important. I think it's very smart. And when I read it first time, I said, ah, that one can help mm -hmm. others. Uh, cities uh, to, to look at it. Now we saw uh, today what uh, Chicago did, uh, which is uh, a, a bit different. Uh, Los Angeles uh, was gonna, for me, uh, uh, Los Angeles was gonna happen on, um, you know, the Terminal 9, the Concourse Zero, 
what's going to really and, change and it. And they've, they've used the People Mover project as a PPP as well. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's more an even availability payment yeah. type of project. Yeah. Now, the point is that with all this, if I look at, uh, well, I'm a European bank, so uh, where I'm more interested is if it is pure uh, city of Chicago or Los Angeles or the department, call it whatever you want, uh, that it is really a, a procurement that's not really a good potential deal for yes, us. Yes, exactly. Also, if you do, uh, well, it's a Terminal 5 at GFK, mm -hmm. which is being um, developed. Uh, okay. Um, there are more demuni bond experts or pub experts, uh, this type of obligation that uh, will follow it. Here we follow GFK, but it's a bit different uh, in the sense that they required also private money and not just uh, pubs and muni. So that's, of course, it's interesting. The most interesting is when you get an operator getting involved, where there is a true transfer of risk. Uh, but. Today you can't say that Terminal 9 uh, of Los Angeles is going to be uh, similar to GFK Terminal 1. Or, uh, well, we've talked about this at other try. conferences, but the, the, the difficulty with the U.S. market, every deal might as well be in a different country because the rules are different, the, uh, the players are different, the, the local politics is different. So yeah. Uh, yeah, how do you cope with that when from city to city the rules are absolutely uh, different? And, you know, of course, we have an important New York branch, but they are not specialized in airports. Mm -hmm. And do it out of Paris, forget it. It's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Already people who have a whole team uh, find it difficult. Now, what we can uh, do, because uh, indeed we have, uh, uh, let's say, only an airport franchise, is that sometimes you can pick up some ideas and to see, oh, but maybe I can uh, apply to a totally different geography. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, so, for instance, the example of Mexico was quite interesting, very Mex innovative. Me Mexico City. Mexico City. Yeah. Uh, and you could say you could apply it somewhere else mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the, the transfer of risk was reasonably limited mm -hmm. from, again, a lender's perspective. So, yeah. it, it can be interesting. Others like uh, some scheme developed in Africa, you can say you can use it in some other countries mm -hmm. because uh, the risk country is less important, things like that. And you will look at both primary and secondary transactions? Mostly I would try primarily. Mm -hmm. And then of course, the easy case for secondary is when you've got an infra fund or uh, mm -hmm. that um, you know that the fund is maturing 2020, mm -hmm. you have extension potential, but you know that by 2024, yeah. they must get out of the deal. So uh, sometimes you can say, okay, may I look to somebody before? Uh, I'm something like, interested like, to try to preempt yeah. the, the, the process when they say, hey guys, uh, I'm going for sale and you've got all the bunch of Because, you know, lots of people are watching closely Lima uh, with the, yeah. the lease extension and, <laughs> and the two minority partners, you know, that could be a very interesting secondary play, but it's been a long time coming and a lot of people are lining up for it. So. Well, he, in that specific case, you know, we, we tried to be debt advisor. Uh, we did not, uh, somebody else uh, got it. But since then, nothing is happening much because indeed there are first, uh, first you have to close the financing. Exactly. And before doing that, you have to close, let's say, the ownership uh, implications, so on and so forth. And every time you talk to them, even on a regular basis, they say, yeah, they closed next the, week or next month is going to be yeah, the right they closed one. The construction, uh, they closed the construction contracts quite a while ago, and I guess... Yes, exactly, yeah. but uh, still there is some land ownership. But to, to start the lending process in parallel to potentially a sale of two minorities, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a tough game. So. Uh, Everybody waits. Yeah, exactly. Then you've got problems like Bolivia, it's uh, um, Colombia. Sorry, yeah. there are so many different projects that yeah, hard sometimes to keep, track. To keep track of them. It's already hell of an achievement. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, as we were talking before off camera, the the real challenges are so many projects that are in various stages, and to keep 
keep your level of intel current is almost impossible. And yep. everybody's everybody's got some information, but it's all imperfect. Um, and then the government changes its mind, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's for sure. That's the key point for us also. Yeah. You, you just mentioned briefly Bolivia, and that's another example of where it came on the radar. And you know, our latest intelligence tells us that it, it may not be such an open process now. So yeah. it's really hard to keep track of every last nuance of what's going on. But part of these conferences is really to spend time talking no, to people. These conferences are very, very useful for Absolutely. that matter. And uh, yes, indeed, uh, you have to to sort about the very interesting, potentially interesting, yeah. for which type of client who can be a potential win, and then the other would just say, uh, yeah. out of all respect, I, I just can't handle it. Yeah. Now, I'd be remiss if not asking you about ADP, but what do you see happening with the ADP process now that this referendum has been mandated? As you say, pa patience is a virtue. And I think they're going to need a lot mm -hmm. uh, because indeed now if uh, the referendum's uh, timeline is already long, you need nine months to get the approval, uh, well, to find the 10% of the uh, voting uh, population to say, yeah, let's have a referendum. Then you have to organize the referendum and then it's going to bunch uh, practically uh, uh, near the presidential election I was going to say, then you, then you run up so, against the uh, election. If you want my bet, you, it can be after, uh, well, for, under the new president or the Macron renewed the presidency, let's say. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the, it's the classic problem that these processes take so long and then you run out of political bandwidth. Sensitivity is so high now. Well, it's the same thing that happened in Canada. You know, there were, there, yeah. there was an idea. We remember we discussed a lot uh, two yeah. or three years ago. Now we hardly ask uh, what about Canada. Uh, yeah. no, and it's, you know, it all comes down to that issue.